Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 147 of the Spear and Sunnies podcast. How you cunts going? I know, day late, uh, but I was on a plane uh, when I was supposed to, when I thought I was going to be home. So, sorry about that. Sometimes you're just fucking flying around. Because, uh, you know what? I'm just, so, I'm just so successful. I don't have time for the podcast, man. I'm just just flying everywhere, dude. So, maybe, hey, maybe one day, if I sell enough tickets, I'll take you guys on my private jet. And you can, you can experience what it's truly like to live this incredible life. How I'm fucking, I'm, I'm killing it. I'm making so much money. I fly private business every single flight. I'm so successful. That's not true. <laughs> Dude, do you know why? Oh, fuck. Hang on, I just realized I just started this thing and I didn't plug the microphone in. Is this plugged in? Oh, no, I've been, oh, okay. All right, hang on. Let me plug this in. And I reckon the podcast may sound a lot better. Ah, oh, so I'm so stupid. Okay, hang on. Let me plug this in. I'll be back in a sec. Is that... Is that... Oh, that's... Oh, dude, that's so much better. I, guys, that's why... That's why I'm never going to be in a private jet. Because I'm so fucking stupid that I don't even know that I need to plug in my own microphone to do the fucking potty, okay? So let me tell you... Oh, I, the last three days of my life have been absolute hell. So, I got a video that I had to fly to Perth for. Now, I've never done that. It's a real Mr. Beast type video. And I, I'll tell you, it's fucking hilarious. And I'm not going to ru ruin the video for you. But I am going to tell you the reason why I've been on planes for the last two fucking days. Okay? So, I needed to fly to Perth for a video that you will see very soon. I'm hoping to get that one out next week, probably. Alright? And you'll see that... <laughs> you'll see, right? It's fucking... I had to go to Perth for it, but it was a, it was fucking worth it, right? What was not worth it, however, was obviously I needed to go to Perth. It was short notice. Perth flights are very expensive. It's very far away. So I thought I'll get the cheapest flights. I don't care if I have to fly at stupid times, right? So fly to Perth. I had to wake up at uh, fucking, I don't know. I had to wake up at like three in the morning, okay? Three in the morning, straight to the airport. That sucks. Three in the morning, straight to the airports. And my flight home was at 11 p.m. Now, that was 11 p.m. Perth time. So that was actually about 1 a.m., I believe, my time. So I had to wake up at 3 and then fly home at 1 in the morning, right? So I fly to Perth. I meet up with uh, Jeff Bell from Children Poseidon, uh, or from Jeff Bell and Friends now, and Michael as well, who films and directs all the shit. Uh, there in the video, it'll be, it'll be fucking hilarious, but whatever, right? We, we do the thing, the thing that I had to do there for the video took about eight hours of driving, okay? Eight hours of driving. Fly to Perth, drive for eight hours, drive home. It just so happened that Luke Kidgel was doing his show in Perth. I thought, oh, well, fuck, if I'm here, might as well just open for him, because I've uh, only opened for him once before, so it was good to pay him back for all the times that he's done it for me. Um, so I thought I would, I would bless him and his audience with my presence, <laughs> uh, and, uh, rocked up, did a surprise thing. And I got to see Luke's show, which by the way, very fucking good. Go and see that shit. Uh, I think he's touring in a couple months all around Australia. I think most of his tickets are on sale now. Check it out. Google it. Right. So I did that. And now it's it. Now it's about fucking 11 PM. My time straight to the airport, get on the plane. I know, get to the airport, get my tickets out. I look at my tickets <laughs> and I am fucking deliriously tired at this point. I want to die. I want to be, I want to be dead. I, the flight to Perth is about far, four, four or five hours, right? So I've been on a plane for four hours, been in a car for eight. I just performed and now I'm at the airport. All I want to do, I haven't slept at all. I've been awake for like fucking, I don't know, more than 24 hours at this point or almost 24 hours. Finally get to my, get to the airport. I go to I go to fucking uh, Tiger to check in because they're the cheap cunts, right? I'm like, all right, I might die, but at least I'm not paying a million dollars. I go, I get to Tiger, I get stuck behind these fucking idiots who packed too much shit, and the plane wanted to the Tiger wanted to charge them more for them to take it on. And you know what? Normally I would be against that, but these guys were obese as fuck, and I thought, hey, you've already you're already bringing on extra shit you don't need. <laughs> leave some room for the rest of us, okay? You're already fucking 150 kilos. You shouldn't be allowed bags at all. You should be lucky that you're even allowed on the fucking plane in the seat, pissing off the poor cunt next to you, you know, taking up his armrest with your with your just extra extra piece of arm that you, sh you shouldn't need. 
because you like McDonald's too much, right? You're lucky you're even allowed on the plane. You're lucky that, that for some reason, plane companies don't charge you more for getting on there and, and, you know, charge me less for being such a good cunt and not eating enough food, okay? So say, thank you, please, sir, may I have another? And fuck off, right? They were, they were in front of me and they were having this argument with the fucking air hostess and she was like, you're allowed 20 kilos, you have you have 40, okay? So you need to pay for more. Because here's the thing, it's not even a little bit over. If it's a little bit over, I'd be like, yeah, sure, what? 23 kilos, whatever. Three kilos, that's a, that's a mistake. 20 kilos extra? Hey, man, you're an idiot. Pay for that. Pay for your dumb, your fucking stupid behavior, right? So anyway, they're in front of me having this fucking argument and I'm, I've only got about 10 minutes. I've got 10 minutes and then check-in will close. And I'm like, if these fucking fat cunts take 10 minutes to decide whether or not they want to take their flight and then I miss mine, I'm going sicko mode in the airport and no one will survive. <laughs> anyway, she, the, the woman, she turns around to me. She's like, she, she notices that I have no baggage because was I was a flying in and flying out. She's like, oi, oi, bro, do you, uh, do you have any baggage? And I was like, no. She's like, huh, would you be able to take some of my baggage on? And I was like, no. Because, hey, that's how you get Chappelle Corbett. That's how, that's how you get locked away forever. Because, because some fucking idiot brought 40 kilos of ice instead of 20 like they were supposed to. And then I get stuck with it. And I go, I don't, know, I don't know what's in there. Locked away forever. But the, quick, thankfully, the air hostess had had enough and she shut that down. She said, ma'am, you are 20 kilos over. Nobody else can take that for you. Leave him alone. You need to decide whether you can pay for this or you're going to leave it at home or miss your flight. That's what you need to do. Please wait over there while you decide. I need to serve the man. And I was like, oh, thank fuck. And then I was like, the man, ugh, hate being called the man. Now that I'm 25, I get called, leave the man. You know, when little kids are fucking around near you, I used to get, I used to get, leave him alone, you know, or leave, leave the boy alone. Now I get, leave the man alone. And I go, fuck man, it must be the beard. Leave that man alone. I'm like, am I a man? I don't like being a man. I guess I am a man. But man, here's the thing. Man can mean like 60 to 80, you know? that's the, in, in my head, when, I, when someone says, leave that man alone, I think, oh, he's 60 <laughs> instead of me. Anyway, I get to the counter and she's like, uh, are, you flying to, are you flying to Melbourne? And I was like, yes, that's correct. And then she looks my name up. She goes, oh, you're not in the system. And uh, I was like, oh, 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 I haven't slept for 24 hours. I'm, 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 I'm going to die if I have to stay in this fucking airport because I booked my flights wrong or I was too late, right? And she looks me up and then she gets my fucking flight number and I give it to her. I can't remember what it was. I was like, oh, MH370, whatever it was. <laughs> and uh, she looks it up and she goes, oh, you're not in the system. And then I was like, what the fuck? I booked flights though. And I get up my phone and I realized that I accidentally booked Virgin flights. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to run. I've only got five minutes now. I ran from fucking Tiger. I was like, oh, sorry. I've never taken a Virgin flight before because Virgin flights are for people with money, right? So I run to this Virgin, this Virgin thing. And at the whole way there, I'm thinking, why the fuck am I flying Virgin? It was so cheap. It doesn't make sense. Like, Virgin flights are so expensive. A, a Virgin flight from, from Perth to Melbourne, I can't afford. So I was like, fuck, but I only spent like 500 bucks on a return trip. It doesn't make any sense. It should be much more expensive than that. What's going on? Why is it so cheap? Uh, maybe because it's an 11 p.m. flight. That must be why. So anyway, I, I make it to the Virgin thing. Thankfully, I check in and I... and. Uh, I go there and I, I talk to the guy and uh, I'm like, oh, hey, man, I'm flying to Melbourne. And he goes, uh, you're flying to Melbourne? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, we only, we only have one flight left for today and it's going to Sydney. And I was like, so are you sure? Thinking, oh, fuck, I've missed my fucking flight. I was like, can you look me up in the system? Are you sure? And he goes, yeah, I'll look you up in the system. And now I'm thinking, oh shit, maybe I'm actually flying fucking Qantas. And I pull out my thing and it goes Perth to Melbourne, Virgin. I'm like, no, 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 it's definitely here. And he goes, oh, that's strange. It definitely is a Virgin flight. I'll look you up in the system, mate. Puts my name in, right? And then he goes, oh, yes, no, you are getting on this flight. 
I'm like, oh, but that's going to Sydney. And he goes, yeah, so what you have is you have a connecting flight. So what's going to happen is you'll jump on this flight and you'll fly for five hours and then you'll land in Sydney and then you'll stay in Sydney for two hours and then you'll fly from Sydney uh, and on, get on a two-hour flight and you'll arrive in Melbourne at 9.30 a.m. And I said to him, oh. Are you telling me that I've accidentally booked a connecting flight that goes to Sydney and then to Melbourne instead of straight to Melbourne? Because And that's the reason why it was so cheap? And he said, yes, I think that's what's happened. And I just looked at him and I said, I've been awake since 1am and now I'm not going to go to sleep until fucking 9.30. Actually, 9.30 is when I would get to the airport in Melbourne and then I have a fucking hour and a half trip ahead of me to get home. I'm not going to sleep for 30 hours. I smell like shit and I want to die. Also, I thought I was so organized, so I thought I would have enough time to record my podcast and then do a film clip. But instead, I'm going to be on a fucking plane and I can't cancel the film clip. I can delay the podcast. I can't cancel the film clip because I'm fucking paying people a lot of money to show up to that. So now I'm going to get home at 9, get to the airport at 9.30 a.m., go home, get there at fucking 10 or 11, and then I'm going to go to the, the fucking video shoot and do that for four hours in 36 degree heat, and then I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> but you know what? It was all worth it because, guys, I got to go to the Virgin Lounge and I've never been in the Virgin Lounge before because I fly Tiger like a pleb and holy shit. Even though I had been awake for about 25 hours at this point and I had another nine hours ahead of me, I got to the Virgin Lounge and holy shit, I can't go back. Guys, I can't go back to the days of chilling in the fucking airport surrounded by little gremlins and obese cunts who line up when they when they do the boarding call, even though everybody, you should know that you never line up because that means you're just lining up and waiting in a queue instead of sitting down in your comfortable seat for 40 minutes, you fucking idiots. I was in the Virgin Lounge. Dude, I don't think I've, I want to go back. I want to book a flight just so I can chill in the Virgin Lounge. I want to I want to book a flight to Sydney, right? A Virgin flight to Sydney and then drive to the airport and then sit in the Virgin Lounge for 10 hours, not even take the flight. It's that good. It is so fucking good. The moment you walk in, there's a giant, there's a whole room for the fucking receptionist and she has a giant desk and then a giant room and that's it. And she goes, hello, sir. Can I please see your ticket? And you give her a ticket. She scans it. She goes, welcome to the Virgin Lounge enjoy your time here and i was like oh yeah can't be that good whatever big fancy desk who cares okay i walk in i walk past exclusive toilets that no one was lining up for there wasn't even a queue for the women's when you're in the airport i i would bet a hundred grand every time on there being a queue for the women's toilets i feel so sorry for you chicks but also hey piss faster okay why don't you just piss faster there's no way that that there's no way all of you cunts aren't fucking just taking ages hey piss faster because every time i go there i would say there are more men waiting who want to use the toilet because we know it's going to be quick and women hold on because they don't want to fucking sit down on the dirty public one so there are less women using it but for some reason cues every time hey women piss faster Show, show a little consideration for your sisterhood and piss faster, would you? <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of enraged emails. It's not because of how fucking quick we piss. It's because there's only four cubicles. Hey, hey, hey. I've waited for my girl when she's gone to use a bathroom and she's the only person using the bathroom. And, I've, and I reckon because of all the times I've waited for her using the bathroom, that time would add up to a year. If I didn't have a girlfriend, I would be 24 <laughs> instead of 25. And no one would say, leave the man alone. They'd say, leave the boy alone. Because I would have that much more time in my life of not waiting for girls to use the bathroom. Piss faster. <laughs> 
So anyway, Virgin Lounge. And not only, dude, not only do they have toilets, I went in, I was, first thing I wanted to see was the toilet. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in, I need a wee. Well, I go in, beautiful music playing, towels, actual towels, hand soap that works, nice lighting, beautiful big mirrors, and showers. Nice showers too. Not gym showers, like beautiful, nice showers showers that no one was using holy shit i didn't know that the virgin lounge had showers i would have had one do you know how fucking horrendous you smell after you sit on a sick on a five hour flight and then sit in a car for eight hours and then go back to the airport after you've just performed under hot lights you smell like the under you know how there's the dark side of the moon and that no one ever sees, there's like the dark side of the nutsack that no one ever sees. Because how often do you lift your nutsack up to have a look at it? I don't think I've ever seen the dark side of my nutsack. I don't think I, I don't think anyone in my life would have. You know, the only time you see the dark side of the nutsack is when uh, when you're watching porn and they, and they do that horrendous shot of like the girl's legs are up and and the dude's on top and for some reason the camera guy is like you know what everyone wants to see right now a tiny flash of the woman's asshole but mostly the dark side of the dude's nutsack and his horrendous hairy asshole and his giant thrusting ass that's what really what's what people really want to see right now is just another man's asshole hey no one likes that shot get rid of it never do it again fuck it off all right yeah, so anyway, I was smelling like the dark side of the nutsack, but obviously, you know, I didn't have a towel or anything, so I couldn't shower. So I was like, whatever, that's good to know. Next time I fly Virgin, I'm going to take a shower, even if I don't need one. I'm taking my fucking towel. Come out of the... I use the bathroom, come out, and, I, and I'm like, uh, yeah, still, I'm still thinking, even though I was impressed by the toilets, I'm still thinking, yeah, but how good can the fucking Virgin Lounge be? It's just a lounge. Who cares? It's just a room in the airport. There's heaps of rooms everywhere, right? I bet it's just a room with less people in it. Dude... I've never been more wrong in my fucking life. I walk in and this giant expanse of, of white privilege <laughs> opens up to me. This beautiful expanse of possibilities and oppression just open up to me. And I was like, I'm home. It was, it was every single desk had PowerPoints, USB points, nice lighting. They had fucking magazine stands with today's news and up-to-date magazines. And, and it was there was so much space and they had no shit a fucking free buffet a free buffet dude there was like a whole heap of really nice looking fresh vegetables and fruit and then and then over there they had they had fucking uh pasta and uh uh what else did they had they had what did i have i had that fucking what's that thing with the heaps of rice in it but it's not rice it's kind of like a pasta i don't know What's it, it's, what's it called? It's not quinoa. It's like fucking... It's not even... It's not a health food. Risotto. That's what I had. Is that rice or is that pasta that's shaped like rice? I don't know. The point is, guys, it was fucking free. Free risotto? You kidding me? Yes. Scoop that up. Put it in my fucking bowl. Um, so I had that. And then they had there was a fucking barista, a barista there. And mind you, it was midnight. And they had a fucking barista. Now, normally I would say barista, because I don't want to say a barista. But if, at the Virgin Lounge, if you saw this cunt, that wasn't a barista. That was a barista. They had a fucking barista in the Virgin Lounge, dude. It was so good. It was so good. And you know what? It was so good that I understood why there are so many politicians that don't give a fuck about the people. Because the moment I stepped foot in that virgin lounge, I was like, you know what? Maybe we should get rid of Centrelink. <laughs> Maybe we should get rid of government benefits and we should destroy uh, the public health care system. Because why are my taxes going to help this poor woman with cancer when that money could be better spent on virgin tickets to get into the fucking Virgin Airlines lounge? That's what I want. I'm not paying tax anymore because I want to get into the fucking lounge. That, dude... The minute I stepped foot in there, I stopped giving a fuck about orphans. Close them down. <laughs> Get rid of them because I'm eating free risotto in the Virgin Lounge. 
Oh, you need a new wing for the children's hospital for victims of burns? You need a wing to help third degree burn victims that are under eight? No, because I'm eating risotto in the Virgin Airlines lounge and there's a shower there. That's what I need. Fuck your kids. Shouldn't have dropped that boiling pot of oil. Sorry, that's your problem to deal with. You put the skin back on that nine-year-old. I am reading today's copy of The Age at Midnight in Perth. That's what's more important. And every single person in there was rich as fuck, working on something important, not talking to each other. So good. So good. Everyone was wearing business attire. I was so out of place. Everyone looked at me and they were like, first time, huh? I walked in and the barista was like, would you like a coffee or a tea? And I said, you know what, mate? I would fucking love a tea. And he made that shit for me and he gave me a nice little cookie. And even then, even then, I was like, yeah, whatever. You gave me a cookie. I know it's going to suck. I put that cookie in my mouth. Can someone explain to me how the fuck the Virgin Airlines cookies are the best cookies I've ever had in my life? Virgin Lounge cookies, better than (laughs) mum's. And I don't care. If she hears that, sorry mum, I don't care about anyone anymore. Orphanages, public health care, Centrelink, shut it down. I need that money for access to the Virgin Lounge. So fucking good. But then I had to leave and get on a five-hour flight to Sydney and then stay there for two hours and then fly for another two hours to Melbourne. And ever since I left that lounge, I can't stop thinking about it. There was even free minties as you left. Oh, hey, Jazz. Jazz just got here. Jazz, I've been talking about the Virgin Airlines lounge. Yeah. Have I told you about it yet? Yeah, you have. So good. I'm saying that, come sit down. What do you think about, come sit down, sit next to me. What do you think about public health care? Like your tax going to public health care. Do you think it's good? Yeah. Why? Because Because you've never been to the Virgin Lounge. The minute I stepped foot in the Virgin Lounge, I was like, fuck public health care. I need that money for Virgin tickets. Okay, first of all, there's a basic human decency. That first of all, all humans Virgin are Airlines to. has a shower. Why can't you have both? We Virgin Airlines is an Australian airline and Australia has universal health care. Yeah. So you're... But the point, po- the point is... is that as, as soon as I stepped foot in there, I no, became better than you. Your point is debunk. You're not flying Qantas. You're not flying Emirates. Okay, get back to me. Oh, uh, if I fly Emirates, Emirates, if I fly Emirates, you know that I'm just going to start killing people because I'm better than them. I'll start spitting on the homeless. Yeah. I Hey, man, can I have $2 because I can't feed my kids? Hey, dude, check this. And it's, I've got, it's like a little stub from the Emirates flight. And I go, hey, man, read this. How much did this cost? And he goes... Oh, I can't read. I've got diabetes and I'm losing my eyesight. And I say, it says $2,000 and I spit in his face. I fly Emirates. I worry about you. (laughs) This is your reaction to one time, one time in your life, Lewis, you didn't have to fly a tiger. Guys, I'm sorry. Next year's year's tickets are going to be 60 bucks because I need to get in that fucking virgin lounge again. Just fly tiger like a normal guy. No, I can't. I'm not a normal person anymore. I'm better than everyone else because I've been in the Virgin. You You don't understand how good it was. Free risotto that was good. There was a buffet of good food. It wasn't even buffet food. So? She she doesn't understand. See, I I felt like you. Before I was in the lounge, I was like, can't be that good. I did this whole thing where I was like, it can't be that good. And then I stepped foot in it and I became better than everyone else. So you you think everyone should go and buy themselves a ticket to Virgin Airlines, Absolutely. and that will help evolve humanity to a higher level. Where yes, we will all start vibrating with higher consciousness. Absolutely, I'm just I'm I'm at a you know how some cunts they go to they go to like some I don't know 
place in the jungle and they do they do ayahuasca with a shaman right Th- that that times 10 is when you go to the virgin lounge except instead of realizing that there is no ego can and some, you are wait, one wait, with the universe someone, you realize that you're better we're not using this anymore make, you don't need it anymore can someone make that meme you know that altered levels of consciousness meme can someone make <laughs> one with like flying tiger flying jet star <laughs> flying virgin <laughs> And then Flying Emirates just have a picture of someone beating the fuck out of a homeless person. (laughs) You don't understand, it was so good. It was so fucking good. Um, And it was worth, it was worth the the eight hours. Oh, how how fucked was I when I came home? Yeah, he was very sleepy. It was cute. It was the worst. Yeah. And I still had to do a film clip in 36 degree heat. Yeah. Not good. It was, um, I think it was, yeah, it took you a day to recover. But that's normal. That's, that's the type of work ethic I expect from Lewis is just periods of time where he gets so much done where he then becomes physically incapable and I have to, like, carry him. We were driving home and you just fell asleep in the car and I'm, like, taking the corners really sharply <laughs> just to see his head roll. <laughs> I know you do that shit on purpose, but I can't do anything about it. You can't do because you're asleep. What are you going to do? Okay. So, shall we... Do you want to do miscellaneous bit at the end with me? Sure. All right. Um, Oh, speaking of, guys, uh, the... Oh, I'm declaring another state of emergency. The Australian Podcast Awards close uh, in about two weeks or less than that. Emergency! Emergency! And we were doing pretty well. We now have over a thousand votes. That's pretty good. But I've just fallen into second place by only 60 votes. And it's one of those bullshit fucking murder documentary podcasts. Do not let me lose to that shit, alright? They're cheating. Everyone likes hearing about killers. So did I. I need everyone to go and vote okay, okay so if remind you, me. i have four email accounts i used them all if you have <laughs> if you have one email account make three vote okay i haven't voted for you yet you are a dog it just sounds like a lot of effort tell me why i should vote for you because i'm gonna go up there on stage so you and i'm gonna talk to... shit about the sponsors because that's so funny all right so there's actually as my award awards, speech there's an award ceremony there's an award ceremony Where is it? in sydney it's in sydney when yeah uh, I imagine on the day... Are you allowed to film? Are you going to make a video of it? Yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. I'll Guys, work. why aren't you voting for him? This Be- sounds great. And also, if I win, I have something so fucking funny for the next year. Do you want to hear it? Or they can't know. Have okay. I told you? No. Okay, so so if I win this year... Dude, I'm gonna... They'll hear you. No, they won't. I'll take the audio out. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I've heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. So good. But why can't you just do that anyway? I can't do it now. That'll be too hard to pull off now. No, not now. I'm just... Okay. I'm I'm not doing... That's your... That's the condition, Oh, so that's a reward. That's a reward. It's it's a pretty good reward. You would like that reward. It's fucking funny. Okay. So, uh, I need you guys to vote. It's uh, It'll be all over my socials. I'm going to be playing it very hard. Uh, Australian Podcast Awards. Vote for me. I'm only 60, po- 60 votes behind in second place. Uh, obviously, this podcast is way bigger than me, but they don't want it as much as we do. All right? And I know for a fact, this podcast gets 4,000 views, which means 3,000 of you are fucking dogs. Get off your ass and fucking vote. Mm. Or maybe even 3,500, because I know a lot of people are voting more times than, than they should. Um, okay. Miscellaneous bit at the end. Also, another quick plug before I get into it. Tickets to the live podcast are on sale, and they're almost gone. And I just got uh, an email. I told you about that guy who cucked uh, his friend's dad, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. I helped you with that. Oh, yeah. that was the last podcast. That was, yeah, the last one, which will be out on Patreon. Uh, next week, um, I have here an update. Update. I, I cucked my best friend's dad. I'm not reading on this podcast. I'm saving it. Look how fucking long it is. Oh. I'm saving that for the live podcast. Give me, okay, give me, hang give me, on. Give me, give me. Hang on. I'll point out the one you need to uh, read. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh. Okay. Just. Okay. Read it from I finished. Oh. Don't man. read it out. <laughs> Your face. Is 
Isn't that fun? Oh, 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 oh my god. Isn't that horrible? What is wrong with humanity? So guys, that'll be coming at the live podcast. If you want to hear that, that live, the decisions you have to come. that you guys make when you guys have boners, I just <laughs> I don't understand. Stop. We can't have this now. That's for the live <sighs> podcast. Loosebeers.com slash live. Tickets are almost sold out. You'll hear that shit live and it'll be so fucking funny. Now. Dude. All right. What do we have here? I'm just distraught. All right. We've got this one. I'm pretty sure my crush thinks I'm gay. Uh, G'day, long neck 2.0. Fuck you. Call me Jeff. No, I'm calling you Dan. Uh, I first met my crush in 2014. Okay, already, what has it been, five years? Hey dude, I know the answer. I haven't even read this. I think my crush is, thinks yeah, I'm gay. You met her in 2014 and you haven't made a move yet, dude. Yeah, you've been friend zoned. You're gay. Yeah. No, well, you're not gay. You've no, been... he's been gay zoned. You've been acting like you're gay. That's why she thinks you're gay. Oh, for sure, dude. Like, yeah. what do you think's going to... I don't even... We don't even need to read the email. And I know the answer is because it's a long email. you haven't made your fucking move. We'll try and help you. But some people can't be helped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I met my... Cr also, if you have had a crush for five years, it's not a crush. You're a stalker. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, get a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Paint Warhammer figures. Very mm. fun. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, I first met my crush back in 2014 when she moved from Melbourne to the town that I live. When we were both in year 10. We both had a thing for each other. Uh, are you sure? Uh, we both had a thing for each other, but I chose not to date her around that time because at around that time I was going through depression and figured out it was better to focus on myself so I didn't end up necking. <laughs> That's a yeah. good decision. After a little while she started she ended up moving back to Melbourne and started dating another guy and we pretty much drifted over time and eventually stopped talking. Okay, you can kind of have a have a crush on something if they lived far away because it's like that what if thing. Mm. Of like, oh, what if it was meant to be but circumstances. I'll allow it, okay? You're getting less gay by the second. <laughs> Fast forward to a couple of months ago. I got a random invite to her 20th. And while I was there, she... Wait, so you're not... So, did wait. you fly there? Are you in the same place or not? No. She moved away. She moved back to Melbourne. And then fast forward to a couple of months ago, I got a random invite to her 20th. And while I was there... Well, he went to it. But, yeah, but did you fly or did yeah, you... Yeah, probably. She ended up moving back to Melbourne, dating some other guy. We drifted over time. It Weird. doesn't matter. Just keep reading. Okay. He, um, maybe he flew Virgin. Well, obviously he did. Dude, did you check out the he lounge? Flew, yeah. So good. Fuck public health care, right? If he flew Virgin, he would have already transcended and he wouldn't have exactly. to send he wouldn't uh, have to email questions me. into the podcast. He turned into such an alpha. I think yeah. my dick's bigger, babe. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Fast, <laughs> fast forward a couple of months ago, I got a random invite and uh, while I was there, she told me that she was having problems with her boyfriend and they were probably going to break up. They'd been dating for about three years at this point. As opportunity arose, my feelings for her started to re-emerge and now I have a full-blown crush on her again. Once she broke up with her boyfriend, I started going down to Melbourne. Okay, so he doesn't live in Melbourne. I started going down to Melbourne to meet her uh, and hang out quite a bit. During these visits, we tend to do typical couple shit and seem to be getting quite quite close. We spoon at night and she's... I, oh, my brain hurts. What does it say? We spoon at night and she's comfortable with undressing and getting changed in front of me. However, we've never kissed or mentioned that either of us have a crush on the other. And I'm starting to think she's only this comfortable around me due to her thinking I'm gay. Dude. You... Suck. <laughs> She's on. getting naked in front of you and you're cuddling her at night? She's making moves, dude. It could be. Is that the end? Keep reading. She's also going through a lot of shit with her family at the moment, which is also half why I didn't want to make a move early on as she clearly wanted to sort her own shit out first, as I did the first time we flirted. Maybe I'm just overthinking, but I'd love to hear your opinion. Any help is appreciated. Also, your independent variable show was fucking sick. Thank you. Sorry this was long. 
Hope you have a shitter one than every misfit at the end combined. Dude, she doesn't think you're... She's going to start thinking you're gay. She's... Girls don't make moves. They put themselves in position for you to make the move. Okay, well, there's two options. She might think that he's gay. But they've never really talked good about friend. it. Yeah, they haven't. But they, she might think that or think that they're really good friends, so it doesn't matter. She might have got her into that headspace. Or she might be trying to put herself... Like, it's flirting in a way of being like, look, I'm naked, that means something to you, right? But I would say the thing that he should do, if he's not comfortable making a move, which he doesn't seem to be, is talk about, like, a girl you've dated before. Even if you haven't had a girlfriend before, just make something up. Surely they've already talked about that, though. Well, like, no. Are you telling me that never in your five years of knowing each other have you ever talked about finding women attractive? Or well, finding men attractive. Have. He might not have. It sounds like maybe he hasn't had a relationship in that time. So, yeah. So he hasn't talked about it. Just make someone up and say, oh, like, a girl... I saw that movie in high school with a girl. I went on a date with a girl. Um, something like that. No, nah, don't make up a date. Just make up a female actor you think is fucking hot. Oh, uh, yeah, you could do that. You could like say... Like Channing Tatum oh, or something. <laughs> 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 Look, dude... You are being incredibly passive. If this girl is letting you cuddle her at night, getting naked in front of you, you are being like more passive than I've even s- ever seen in my life. This is and and let me tell you, a lot of virgins email me. This is neck level. <laughs> you need to you need to t- let her know that you're interested. Just dude, bring up. Just tell her what you just told me. Of ah, oh, we used to flirt heaps. Back in 2000 whatever. No, that's too aggressive. This guy obviously isn't like that. No, you say, we used to flirt back heaps in 2000 whatever. I thought we could have made something. It really sucked that you moved back to Melbourne. Not, he's not the type of guy to say something like that. You need, you need to become the type of guy because otherwise no, you're going to be the never, type of guy with the bluest no. balls of all time. <laughs> You'll be cuddling her until you're fucking 80 years old. No. And then on your deathbed, she'll be, you know what? I was letting you cuddle me because I was a little bit horny. And then you'll die never having experienced pussy or the virgin lounge. You'll get, your, you'll get, you'll get the other kind of virgin lounge. where <laughs> The incel lounge. It's just a forum on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, dude, you need to let her know. You have to let her know you're interested. Otherwise, you're wasting money on flights to cuddle someone who thinks you're gay. This is 100% your creation and you need to... Fix it. Let her know you're interested. I mean, if you don't live in Melbourne, when you or next time you organise to fly down, say, "Hey, I was thinking this time we fly down, I could take you on a romantic date somewhere." And then that's it. That's all you got to do. And then she'll be like, "Oh, he's not gay. He's just kind of <clears throat> passive." I'm glad that he's not anymore because I'm well, horny as fuck. You could do things like ask. Be like, if you drive past the sexy land, be like, hey, we should go in there. Yeah. And then, and then that's like, a great move. Look around at stuff and say, haha, we're friends, right? We're just looking at this stuff. But then you can, like, I don't know, ask her what type of vibrator she like. I don't know. See, so you could, you could still play this off as a friend thing. But then, obviously... No, you need a... It's no, been five but, years. Uh, no, I'm saying that he is obviously the type of person who doesn't like putting himself out there in a way that's irrevocable. He wants something where he can chicken out, right? Well, then you'll never fuck her, my friend. Yeah. Well, you, you can... You're telling him to stay in his bubble. You need to burst no, that that's, shit. No, that's way out of his bubble going to sexy land with her. Yeah, well, that's what I'm that saying. Just next bubble. time Wait, you go over, right? say, you we should say, go on a date. You could say, like, at the laundry stuff, like, you could be like, oh, you look really good in that and stuff. And then she'd be like, ha, ha, ha. And then when you pick up the signs, you don't let them go. When you pick up a sign, you have to do something with yeah. it. People don't get together by accident. Especially You're the man, dude. you got to act like it and make a move. The because she time... is clearly putting herself in a position for you to slam dunks. All you got to do is uh, touch the ball. Not necessarily. And by the ball, I mean her titties. Don't start there. Just say you're interested. The other thing, but she might think that he's gay. So I would start with saying, watching a movie and being like, oh, well, Julia Roberts is so hot. 
And yeah. Something, just something so that she knows you're not gay. Do you obviously like women? If you somehow have not managed to say anything. If Dude, you haven't said anything in this whole time, okay, are you sure you're not we've, gay? We, <laughs> we've missed something very important. What? Obviously, he's cracking a big fat when they're cuddling. Yeah. And she would feel that because girls aren't stupid. Yeah. So she knows that you're not gay. Grab that fat. And just do a little bit of thrusting. No. That's no. all. Sometimes Lewis's advice is creepily close to rape. and I. No, it's not! No, no you don't just start thrusting at someone. If, when you don't know if they're interested. If you're cuddling if you're, naked no, in a bed. It's different for us because we've been in a relationship for six and a half years. If we're cuddling naked, you can thrust at me all you want. But if, it, if we're friends and she might think he's gay hey, or might on. not be interested... Are you not gay? <laughs> I thought you were gay this whole time. And we were just in a relationship no, no, and acting like... No, I thought you were gay. Oh. Aren't you gay? No, no. I'm just a higher being because I've been in the Virgin Lounge it's and so, everyone wants I'm to so fuck confused. me. I'm so confused. I yeah. mean, every Dude, time... Dude, all you need to tell is... All you need to say is just tell her that you find her attractive and you want to date her. That's all. Can I take you on a date? We should see this movie. Yeah. And then... That's if you're not overcomplicating it. That you just have it's, to do it's that. It's not a complex Everyone... thing. Just say, hey, I think you're gorgeous and I want to take you on a date. It's not just about how people look. He might love her personality. Okay, you can't trust doesn't. anything in her personality, though. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone's asked someone out and been rejected. It's just part of life. I've had crushes on friends before, way back when. Yeah, before you... The fuck? You're not allowed. To, you're not even allowed to be a person before you. That's met me. the trickiest thing is when you have a crush on a friend because you yeah. don't want to ruin the friendship. But if it's to the point where you, are but so I've been in that position no. where I've crushed on a friend and I'm like, oh, I don't want to ruin the friendship. But then Here's I the just thing. ended up fucking miserable chasing around thing. this girl for four if you, years. If you are so obsessed with them and like them so much that that friendship isn't worth having if you're not able to move it to the next level. It's not worth preserving that friendship in a friend base where you're always wanting something more. It's better to step out of your comfort zone and try and turn it into something more. And if it doesn't turn into anything more, just know that you you tried your best and you were courageous. And then you can find somebody else. Yeah, and then you, you can know? move on. Otherwise, you Tom can't move on. And if you can't move... <laughs> <laughs> Just tell her. Stop stop being passive. That's the problem. You're being incredibly passive. All you have to do is say, hey, I think you're gorgeous. We should go on a date. Or, hey, okay. Oh, okay. I love your personality. Okay, step one, say that you think an actress is hot. Step two, tell her that she looks nice. Yep. In that shirt or dress or her hair looks nice. And you have to tell her a few times on different days because otherwise she might think it's one of compliment. Yep. And then step three, take her to sexy land and flirt with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then just next time you have a fat, just like ram it, ram it in there. Okay, now now <laughs> you're being rapey ass. Yeah. No, okay, fuck all that advice. What you do, you take her to the airport, you book a Virgin flight, you go into the Virgin Lounge, you go, you check in. She goes, welcome sir, to the Virgin Lounge. Can I scan your ticket? You scan your ticket. Then she goes, welcome ma'am, to the Virgin Lounge. Can I scan your ticket? She doesn't have one. Go into the Virgin Lounge, eat some risotto, come out, she'll be dripping. Because you are such a high being. Yeah, it's a it's a um, counterintuitive name because it's the Virgin Lounge, but mm-hmm. it's the opposite. Because I it mean, attracts it, it attracts pure blood virgins. But when they to come you. out, yeah. Oh no, that's what I mean. Like when I stepped no, out of the Virgin Lounge, virgin. there were like sixty virgins going, "Pick me, pick me!" And I said, "Sorry, this bitches, so I have a flight to catch." Because you, you wouldn't would, understand. You're a peasant. You would think that it's like the Arab Emirates that have the sixty <laughs> virgins. No, no, no. That's only if the plane blows up because. Oh. <laughs> And then, yeah, that's right. After the plane blows up, there's yeah. all of the virgins okay. waiting for you. Last email. This one I may have addressed by myself, but this one's for Jazz and Lewis. Oh, hi. For Jazz and Lewis, a response to your girlfriend saying you think gay sex is gross hey, you've is homophobic. Hey, you already told me about this. From a lesbian's perspective. Have you read this before? You've already read it on the podcast. You've already said it to me. In you a nutshell. You just want to shame no, me. No, it doesn't make him homophobic. If he went around telling gay men he thought they were gross. Okay, hasn't everyone already heard this? Can I just respond to it? For me, I'm a lesbian. The idea oh. of a penis disgusts me. Yeah, they're pretty gross. To the point where I couldn't think of Ew. anything worse. So there you go. 
So she's homophobic as well. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I just wanted to trigger you. Okay, so my response to this, you have read it to me before. My response to it is I have no context for understanding it because I am bisexual and I like pussies and I like penises and to me anyone who doesn't like either of those things is a Nazi. It's a general <laughs> Nazi. Uh, you, there's a lot of love to go around. What? I'm a penis! <laughs> Exterminate! You're telling me that you don't like gay sex? I'm like, what is wrong with you? I don't know, man. It's just, okay. so it's even gayer than that last email. Yeah, it's pretty gay. <laughs> All right, we should finish. I want to go. Okay. Well, that's the end of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Uh, I've got a great fucking video coming out, uh, and you'll understand why. I was on planes all day instead of doing this. Ooh, um, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's fucking so stupid. They don't know about it, do they? No, they don't. I haven't yeah. talked about it, but it's very good. He's been working on some really great content recently. I've yes. I'm very jealous. He's flying all over the place. And yeah following your dreams and being consistent you should all give him a huge pat on the back for being consistent with his content because that is that is quite did you say a, a, a huge join of the patreon to support the ongoing creation yeah of consistent i think that's content. what I is said. that what you said i think that's what i, I think said. that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash loose beers for early access to everything that i do including the four videos i filmed this week that probably won't come out for um, well, we'll come out across the month, but we'll All be right, out in the next couple of days. Go. Okay, thanks for listening. Have a shit one. Have a Tickets shit one. to Bye. the live podcast are on sale now, and um, just fuck you, mate. Okay, she's not you. She's not you, mate. You want to have sex with her? Stop being gay. Thank you, guys. Gay sex is gross. <laughs>